centre stage as the glory and victory deliver the game of the season so far. In Newcastle, Van Egmond is back with a bang in the Liberty A-League and a homegrown hero sparks massive celebrations for the Mariners in Gosford. A very happy Sunday evening to you. It is awesome to have your company here on Dub Zone tonight. I'm Neve Bowens, joined once again by A-League's commentator, Taylor Palazzeri. Hello, Taylor. Neve, lots of good, some tough stuff too. We'll get to it all. We will. Plenty happening today. Former Sydney FC legend, Theresa Plyce. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Former nice Matilda as well. We've got two Matildas <laughs> in the house tonight. Alicia Ferguson making your Dub Zone debut for this season. Hi, Ish. Thanks, team. It's great to be here. <laughs> We are going to start with some of the not so good that Teo mentioned off the top. We thought this story in Newcastle would be all about Emily Van Egmond headlining what looked at times like a massive victory for the Jets. But late on East, we saw Holly McNamara score a goal, go down immediately afterwards holding her knee. And these were really, really worrying signs. Yeah, concerning for Holly McNamara, obviously didn't look great. I think a couple of things, Holly's reaction when she went down and just the fact that there was no contact as well. So she'd played that ball past the goalkeeper, she'd landed, looked like there was a little twist, no contact there. You could see her mouthing the words, my knee, my knee, and obviously in some distress. Distress. So really wishing Holly all the best for that injury. Hopefully it's not too sinister, um, but a big loss for Melbourne, Melbourne City. She was named in the Matildas squad this week as well, Teo, and this is a player who, despite being just 20 years of age, has had a really challenging history of injuries already. Yeah, ACL at 15, foot stress fractures at 17 and an ACL which we all saw when she was playing for Melbourne City season before last. So she's already missed so much football and so much time but when she plays she's incredible and she had ridden uh, two yellow card challenges in the game. She was targeted physically by Newcastle and yet it's non-contact, it's horrendous luck and it's left everyone, including myself frankly, feeling really flat. Yeah, just seeing her reaction was heartbreaking and yeah, our thoughts are with with Holly and, um, you know, it's never nice to see that. And as, as a player that's done it before, you could see in her reaction, maybe she knew, but hopefully it's not as serious. And look, we know she's bounced back before from, from serious injuries, so we know we're going to see her again. Let's celebrate, T, what she did in this game prior to that injury, right? at the death because she was once again as we've seen all season immense stunning stunning form once again and look at this mixing it up with a, a glancing header beautifully timed there picked out brilliantly as well yeah t look she scores all manner of goals she, does. <laughs> she scores 1v1 she scores headers she's up and down the pitch she's got so much energy she's going to be a big loss um, to City as well, but she's just an incredible player, you know. She And she, she has so many hard challenges she against does. her because she has that pace. She faces up, she runs at the opposition and she makes it difficult for them and they have to challenge her and they can't keep up. And was still relentless and got her team out of trouble in, in a tough match. So incredible stuff, absolutely pulls the strings for City. She won this game for City, Teo, and I feel like so many other events in the game almost overshadowed what from Galich was an incredible opening goal. She scored a banger to kick things off. Yeah, this Melbourne City team, it's its not just the Holly McNamara show. They have some amazing young talent that they've cultivated. It is funny because when uh, City were dominant upon their entry, they actually didn't take too many uncapped players and turn them into Matildas, and I feel as though in the last four seasons that has flipped. Now they're a team that a young player can go to and absolutely aspire to the national team. It's a slow burn with Galich. No one's trying to rush her in. No one's trying to make her a bolter anymore. And I think that this is something that all fans, not just City fans, can enjoy as her development continues in the midst of a very talented team that's up near the top of the league. We thought... Emily Van Egmond's re-entry into the league each would be the major talking point out of this game and for great swathes of the game it looked like it was. We were watching this game in the green room and I wanted to know how long it would set, take Em to settle back into the Liberty A-League. She answered that. She did, but it's just the measure of what a great experienced international player she is. She's had a great season with San Diego Wave. They won the NWSL Championship plate under Casey Stoney, very experienced former England international. But Emily's game is vision and playing in passes and angle, those angle passes on to run. She came up with a goal, nice and composed. She could have had another one. There was yeah. a, a shot that just went past the post. But that's what this team needs as well. They're a young team, T. They need that experience yeah. and they need Emily, who is a winner. Yeah, instant impact and great to see Em picking up where she's left off. And what a player to have around that camp for those youngsters. 
Only for a short space of time. Still, yeah, but absolutely, there, yeah. you can. You can there you is know. debate about that, and you know, oh, it's only. But you know what? That the amount of experience those players will they'll see here in and around the training grounds, off on and off the pitch, it's invaluable. It's that level of professionalism. It is that they and can winning then mentality. Take like, and winning yeah. mentality. Leah Blaney said in commentary that effective mm. possession wins you games, mm. and it was incredible to see M turn a team that last week really looked like they didn't have a well-formulated game plan. They didn't know how they were going to win that game tonight. They were in this game up to their eyeballs. Yeah, absolutely. And this is Emily Van Egmont. You know, she's got that vision, gets her head up, she's playing balls in behind and she made a difference for Newcastle today. She absolutely hates losing M Van Egmond, but she was good enough after this game, a 3-2 loss to Melbourne City, to send us this message. Hey, Dad, so, uh, it's amazing to be back playing in Jets colours, come back and obviously help the girls uh, do whatever, whatever I can in, in any way that is. Um, whatever role it asks of me, I'll always put it to the best of my ability. And, just to lead and, and hopefully lead by example. We saw her do exactly that in Newcastle tonight at number two sports ground where an awesome crowd was along to see that Matilda, Emily Van Egmond, as well as the rest of the side in action. So get along in the lead up to Christmas while we've got Emily Van Egmond back on Aussie shores. Let's head west, Teo. You called this game late last night. Perth up against Melbourne victory. It was a cracker of a contest, potentially game of the season so far. And that end from Hannah Lowry gave the home fans plenty to celebrate. It certainly did. And I think the crowds are building in WA because words got out that Perth are a winning team now. They didn't win this game but they showed character to come back. Hannah Lowry scored the free kick in the first half to give them the lead but really the equaliser in stoppage time 96th minute. This was a story of a goal where a lot had to go right the time pressure of running out of seconds. It's not just the finish from Lowry, it's the three or four passes in the build-up to the goal. With that said, Ish, <laughs> Melbourne victory will feel uh, pretty hard done by that they let three points slip. Thanks for leading me in there, Teo. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think just they got they got pulled out of position. Tori Hansen came rushing out towards this ball and lay, allowed that little one-two pass in and for Lowry to finish in there. You know, late in the game, you're in you're in the ascendancy, you're winning. You might you know you need to keep you need to keep and you need to keep nice and compact and you need to maintain your shape. And but it shows where they are mentally, doesn't it? They stayed in the game, they showed character and they capitalised on that. A bit of a brain snap there from victory. Rachel Lowe, I feel like, T, we speak about each and every week this season on Dub Zone. You're so yeah. familiar with her football from a Sydney FC perspective. She's in Melbourne victory colours this season. And with that game time, with the regular minutes and the starts, she's showing just what an impressive footballer she is. That's the key and that's what she went in search for at the victory and her two goals were stunning in that game. World-class volleys. Talk about composure and technique to keep that down and guide it back into the dangerous area there. But we always refer back to the form she was in at Sydney last season. But you know what? That's gone. She's, she's going to exceed that this season. She already is, I believe. Victory were nowhere in this game. Perth had great chances to take a 2-0 lead. Lowe had been more or less anonymous until popping up with these two goals. But again, I think these are the sort of things that players, as they get the chance to mature in this league... We spoke about it with Susan Fonts on camp. Players don't throw their bundle and say, it's not my night. Lowe didn't score until the 79th minute. All of a sudden, she has two in five and has flipped the game. And I think that's reflective of some of these players playing a lot more in the Liberty A-League and getting the chance to realise, hey, it can be my night if I persist. That's but right. But you just said that maturity, T, and yeah. that, that yeah. maturity not to try and hit the leather off the ball, to actually guide those in. They were both busy six-yard boxes. It made it difficult. Keep her unsided as well. And she just tried to get a good connection on both yeah. of those. And it shows well. she'll have a few shots that aren't that great, but she gets up, she goes again and, and produces world class and, and keeps her team in the game. We're hoping for a number of Aussie centuries tonight, Teo, <laughs> right across the board, but we had one in the yeah. Liberty A-League to celebrate in Perth. We certainly did. Uh, Tash Rigby, the captain of Perth Glory, raised 100 games. Third Glory player to play 100 games for the club. She'll equal Mariana Tabane next week on 101. Shannon May is the all-time leader on 120. Um, interestingly, before the Hannah Lowry free kick, she actually... Uh, uh, went up and hugged Hannah Lowry almost as if to calm her down. And whatever she identified there as the captain of the team, that moment of leadership, it led to a goal. Uh, she doesn't get an assist for it. But still, I think that's the sort of captain Tash Rigby is, that she just has a great emotional understanding as well as being a great footballer.
Raise your bat, Tash Rigby. Congratulations <laughs> on bringing up your century in Perth last night. Let's have a look at some of the players, Teo, that are on the market or potentially on the market internationally and what clubs within the A-League would absolutely love their services. We've just been talking Victory. A former Victory player, Alex Chidiak, is doing her thing with Tigres in Mexico. They're coming to the end of their season. She's been on loan there from the US. Is Chids a player that you can see potentially back in the A-League women's this season? Well, I think clubs will be having the conversation and they'll be making their bids because everyone wanted a piece of Chids, but she chose Melbourne Victory the last two seasons. Obviously, was the Dolan medalist last campaign and, and won that medal from a small sample size. Uh, Tigres drew nil all in the first leg of their semi-final in Mexico. If they're knocked out, uh, Chids' parent club racing Louisville, the contract ends in December. This could be the transformational mid-season signing, not necessarily to victory. I imagine every club will be lining up. Just asking the question, Alex, do you want to come back and play in the A-League? Because she would get massive minutes, Ish, back in the A-League. And we know from a Matilda's perspective, playing minutes really matter. Yeah, I just put my hand up. Like, <laughs> Brisbane, 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 like, look, she's, a, she's an experienced attacking player and, and I know we'll talk about it a bit further on when we come to the Brisbane game, but of course Cubs would want her. But yes, in, in terms of the Matildas... She needs to be playing regular minutes and that's going to be, you know, be difficult for her to get back into the team until she's doing that. Another club who we assume, T, <laughs> are on the lookout for a signing is Sydney FC. We had Nat Tobin here in the chair last week talking about her season-ending injury. From a defensive perspective, is Sydney FC in the market? Well, I think they've done well to recruit Jessica Seaman back and I think she's done an incredible job. She was amazing over in Uzbekistan with the AFC Women's Club championship. She, she did a phenomenal job. I think they should absolutely try and keep her. And there are whispers they are in the market for a foreign uh, centre back as well. So, yeah, keep your eyes out. Might be happening very soon. Yeah, watch this space. T, thank you. Another couple of players each from a Matilda's perspective mm. who signed off with their clubs in Sweden this week, Katrina Gorry and Charlie Grant. Mm -hmm. We assume, and we're so excited for them, that potentially they're headed to the WSL in the UK, which would be massive for them both professionally. When you look at the clubs in the WSL, who do you think could really benefit from their services and from their perspective would be a really good match? Yeah, well, look, most of our majority of the Matildas are in the WSL, and I still believe it's the best league in the world at the moment for depth and for quality. I think, you know, Tegan Michael would love to see Charlie at Liverpool, and Liverpool just got done 5 1 by Chelsea um, overnight. But, you know, another club where they're, they've been a bit hit and miss and probably need just a bit more attacking prowess is, is Spurs. Spurs are they're kind of like there or thereabouts. Um, look, Aston Villa had a great season last season under Carla Ward, have been struggling this season. Um, Emily Gilnick was there. Could potentially be, but I think West Ham would be another one. Mackenzie Arnold's there. Mackenzie Arnold, you know, our, our Aussies love to go and, and hang out with the Aussies. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, Rianne Skinner, who was a former Spurs coach as well. Um, look, I think there's options. I think probably out of some of those clubs, you know, they're the ones that would suit. And because, again, it's got to be about minutes. It's got to be about minutes for these players. That's what they need to continue being in selection in Tony Gustafsson's Matilda squad. So I think that's got to be a key consideration for them. Let's have a look at that Matilda's squad then because it was named this week and a couple of notable uh, additions to the squad. Holly Mack rewarded for her phenomenal form in the Liberty A-League this season. She's back in the squad. Unfortunately, if you missed the start of the show, she was injured in the clash with Newcastle today and we'll be keeping a really close eye on that this week. Charlie Rule is another one, T, who's in the camp proper now. She was a train-on in Perth and she's that next-gen defender, isn't she? We know we have edge defenders already. Do you see Charlie Rule as potentially a future centre-back option alongside Claire Hunt? Definitely. Um, she's got all the characteristics to make a quality centre-back. She's got the aerial threat about her. She's physically maturing now. Her distribution's great and she's tactically aware, so she could easily make that transition. She's in the back line anyway at Brighton. She's performing. She's getting good minutes, which is key, as, as, we, as Ish just mentioned. So, absolutely, she could become a future centre-back. No Alex Chidiak, no Courtney Vine, Teo. We haven't seen Court back playing any minutes since that hamstring injury in Perth. Is that at the basis of their omission? Yeah, and again, the reason that Courtney Vine didn't play for Sydney FC today 
Uh, no timeline has been communicated on a return either. I think they're going to be very careful and cautious. As we know, those uh, Euro, uh, Olympic qualifiers against Uzbekistan aren't until February. So missing the Canada window, that's that's gone. You know, so Sydney FC will be hoping that Courtney Vine is up to speed for their sake, but also the Matildas will be hoping for the same thing in the run-in. And that's at about round 16 or 17 of the Liberty A-League. So still plenty of games as a runway, even if Courtney Vine isn't necessarily back in the next week or two. Heaps of excitement around these Canada friendlies, though, as well. I love the fact they sold out in a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. So they'll get to see an absolute goat of Canadian football in action for the last time as well. And Christine Sinclair will have both of those games for you, of course, on 10 Play and Paramount Plus. Let's have a look at a game you called this weekend. You're in CoCom's tee for the Central Coast Mariners clash with Wellington. The Mariners' first win at home in their return to the Liberty A League. And it was a young product from Gosford, born in Gosford, who scored the winner for them. It was Rasmussen. She's been at the club since she was 11 years old, so she's a Mariners product through and through, and she came on and changed the game. Amazing substitution Emily Husband made, but, yeah, she came on, and credit to Ergamal, who had an outstanding game and, and set Rasmussen up on a platter here. Yeah. It was amazing. Quality. Like I was saying to you, T, you know, sometimes you see those players get into those positions, but they might kind of bounce the ball into the centre of the box, but it was a great delivery. I think Ergamal definitely is a is an absolute game-changer for the Mariners and fantastic finish. And they tactically, they were fantastic against a, a really good Wellington team who, you know, we've we've been watching and, and, and admiring their style of play. So as a club you've played for in the past, T, those pictures we saw there at the end celebrating with fans in Gosford, that's a really special moment for this team. It was. It was really special to see and they're building a connection which... And we know the men's side have done and now uh, the women's side are doing. So, um, yeah, they're on the up, the Mariners. Wellington felt hard done by at times in this game, Teo. Let's mm. have a look at a penalty shout to begin with. I would love to hear how all three of you saw this one. So, Paul Temple uh, targeted this moment, albeit a half-hour mark, so only in the first half where Taryn King and Mariana Speckmeyer collided. Uh, he was adamant it was a penalty. T, you in commentary did not believe that to be the case. I'm going to back you here, T. I don't oh, think thanks, it, I don't think, I don't think it was a penalty either, but uh, I know it's not slot machines across the entire panel here. Look, T, I, I can are you see... Saying, are you saying, are you I, just, I, I think she played for the pen there. I think she could have stayed but on her feet was, and, and been clear on goal. She That's... was past the defender and then there was contact. I, in now, if yeah. that was outside the box, I think it would have been a free I kick. Think, I don't whether think it was, was a soft free <laughs> kick or not, but she was already <laughs> she was already past the defender. I'm I know, standing I by my opinion. <laughs> I just don't think there was enough contact for a tough spec might have fallen. We'll continue this after. We'll continue this after. Like the other day. of a game. MT. I did, thought she yeah. was a real standout yeah, in this yeah. contest. Yeah. And I loved her clashes with Taryn King throughout yes. as oh, well. God. They were, <laughs> as the two of you are, absolutely tough. up for the battle. Yeah. In what was an ordinary performance for Wellington, Speckmeyer stood out and made things happen and created opportunities for them. Yeah. This wasn't a great moment, though, was it, for Speckmeyer? Just no, just no need to do it. Whether it was petulant, whether it was laziness, but really, I mean, and she, you know, just absolutely no need. Absolutely no need to do that. To put that in context, there was a four-second gap between the whistle going and that contact mm. there. But Emma Kotzbeck's one of the best assistant referees in the A-League. I mean, and she's right mm. there with a, a bird's-eye view. And Should have been a red card. This, this was a hugely divisive argument, though. T, you at the time also thought it was a red. It's a red. The, the, it's fe the, Phoenix a, fans, it's a the Phoenix fans seem to think that it was just an accident. They're, they're adamant think, that no, it wasn't we, a red look, card offence. If, if, if anyone knows red cards. cards. Yeah, if anyone knows red cards. <laughs> it's like, a brain snap. Look, we, you could, you, we knew she knew what she was doing. It was really unfortunate because Wardlow actually went off injured as well. Um, you know, and, and I, can, I can understand why everyone's a bit cranky about that and Speckmeyer not getting that penalty in the first half as well. For that, I just think, you know, it just was unnecessary from Speckmeyer. At least Wardlow saw the funny side. At least I think she did. She posted a wanted poster <laughs> on her yeah. Instagram <laughs> with that tackle <laughs> in the wanted poster, wanted a red or yellow card. <laughs> Um, clearly <laughs> still on the, on the run <laughs> on the hunt. There was no card at all, which was bizarre. Not even a yellow, so, yeah. I think at minimum it should have been yeah, a yellow card, for wasn't sure, it? For it sure, for sure. definitely, yeah. 
So that's three straight games undefeated for the Mariners. And they're a team at the moment who are absolutely looking like a greater sum together as they are of their parts. Let's have a look at the Liberty A-League pass now because I love this bit each week when I get to mention just what we're up to. And we're up to 26K now. So if you are 16 or under right across the country, get your hands on a Liberty A-League pass because you can get into any game of the Liberty A-League this season for free. Get along and watch Emily Van Egmond while she's back here on Aussie soil. Mm -hmm. And Unite Round fixtures and ticket sales were announced this week as well. So your Liberty A-League pass would get you along to Unite Round as well. There's some cracking fixtures across the course of these few days in January from the 12th to the 14th. A whole array of double headers. Teo, I know you've been looking at this in detail this week. What are you looking forward to? The grand final rematch is in there. Western United against Sydney FC. It obviously went quite badly for Western United last time, but very different looking Sydney FC this time around. Western United might still be in the mid-table mix, desperately needing three points by the time we arrive in mid-January. And uh, I think it's slightly ironic that it's taking place as a Western United home game in Sydney again. So I think that's uh, what I'm looking forward to in Unite round, yeah. Well, actually, Wellington and the Mariners meet up again during your night round. So go, there's yeah. going to be a bit of spice, I think, in go. that game. So I'm really looking forward to that King one. Spec Meyer yeah. return. <laughs> and Tarantini. Yeah, I definitely think that victory, Perth return leg, is going to be an absolute corker as well. I think some great games in the night round. We saw your side, T Sydney FC, back in action on home soil this weekend. They're up against Adelaide United and it became very clearly the Fiona Wirtz show. She was up against her former club and she showed them exactly what they're missing this season. She did and it was a comfortable... Hit out for the for Sydney returning after a tough trip and then having an away match. But yeah, Fiona Wirtz on absolute fire for for Sydney. It's great to see her back to her best now. But here's a great finish. Good cut back there. They were getting a lot of joy down that right they hand were, side, though, weren't they? they Hodgson were. left back for Adelaide was. Yeah, well yeah there. she was pushing forward a lot. There was a lot of space in behind her, and a lot of Sydney FC's attack was down that right hand side. But I mean. Um, Lemon coming in, stepping in here. What a fantastic Great delivery. In, right? What a delivery. Just made like, it so easy for quality. her. Just had to glance at yeah, absolutely. on target great, there. Great play. Burst pass. The Adelaide defender took another touch, played it in. But yeah, quality goal. Sydney happy with the three points on their return. Mm -hmm. From Adelaide's perspective, Teo, they were trying to avoid four defeats on the trot. They were unable to do so there at home and it feels like Chelsea Dorber's return is a green shoot that they really need right now. They do because it, it brings a different dimension to their forward line. Unfortunately, they've lost Amelia Murray to the new year with ankle surgery, so it's kind of one in, one out. Hannah Blake at least scored her second goal of the season here. And this, to be fair, changed the tone of the game. At 2-0, it was looking like how far Sydney Shea Connors missed a a bit of a gimme for 3-0. And at that point, you know, Grace Gill and I in the commentary were actually discussing, do they sacrifice a forward? Do they pack the midfield? Do they play a back five for damage limitation? So at least having a spearhead in Dorba return to the team, hopefully by next weekend with her international clearance, means that they will pose a greater attacking threat and be able to at least bring some competitive balance, which is what we got in the second half right up until that uh, penalty that sealed the game. Offside? Uh, I think Abby Lemon is playing the attacker Hannah Blake on side there. Angle, wasn't it? I mean, the, the reaction of Abby Lemon is the giveaway as opposed to the rest of the Sydney team because Ante Juric and Jada Wyman both got booked for wow. protesting. But yeah. I don't necessarily think Lemon uh, was joining in those protests. It was one of those ones where she was trying to step up and Hannah Blake went, went past her and it, like the timing of trying to see it and that angle made it a little bit tricky. But, um, yeah, not, they weren't happy, were they? <laughs> they were not happy. But I, I, I agree with you. Sometimes the reaction of the players is exactly what tells you exactly what's gone mm. on, whether they look guilty or they're, you know... Asking the assistant referee, <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Let's head to Brisbane Western United now. This game this afternoon, T, while we were here in the studio, it was Alex Smith's first game in charge. He took over from Gareth McPherson midweek. Let's have a look at it because we didn't see that new coach bounce that we so often see across football. No, we haven't yet, but I think, you know, you need to give new coaches some time and... It's all happened really fast in the last week for Brisbane. Um, but, yeah, I think Alex Smith needs needs the time to work with this side. It was a scrappy goal, though, wasn't it? It was. That? But I know, and I know from, from talking to some of the players, the intensity of training has gone up about 10 notches with that Brisbane Raw team. So that's going to take time. I think, you know, a different style. He definitely wants to improve on the attacking. Hence, while I was putting my hand up to say, Chids, Chids, 
if you want to come play for Brisbane, <laughs> because I think I think Corbin is a very yeah, good player and is. a very good target player, but I think she needs a little bit more support. Yeah. And and I think if they want to start improving their attacking play, then she's going to need someone else. The there. sad reality in the short term is that the raw aggression continued, though. They were actually below their average XG. They had two shots on target for the entire game, and one of those was late. So whatever pattern they thought they may have been arresting by removing Gareth McPherson and replacing him with Alex Smith, it didn't change in this particular game. Yeah, that was tough. I'm, I'm going to slightly, and I know this is for both teams as well, the, the state of the pitch was looked at, made it look very difficult mm. for either team to play some very free-flowing football. Um, and, yes, I completely agree. And maybe that was the intensity of training this week. Maybe they're not used to it. Maybe a little bit of fatigue coming in. You know, it does take a little bit of time to bet in. We flagged it for Western United. Hilary Beal came back. First clean sheet of the season, T. Made yeah, a huge difference. Huge difference. And um, she's you know not just clean sheet-wise, but she's a leader back there and communicates with her team. And it's going to be a... It's been a tough start for Western United, but having her back um, and, you know, Chloe Legazzo getting more minutes now as well, they need those players out there because backing up from their stunning first season, uh, they need all, all, all their leaders on board. It was a scrappy old goal for Western, but it was a beautiful corner from Chloe Legazzo as well Great to corner. get that ball right Fantastic. in the mixer. Alex Smith is in charge of the Raw now and he was good enough, despite the loss, to have a little yarn with us after the game. And they started by asking him what went wrong with his attack tonight. Oh, I think just uh, just a little bit of composure. Um, I'm asking the girls to, to run a lot more defensively, so uh, they're going to they're gonna naturally be a little bit more uh, more tired when we do have the ball. So, um, yeah, I think just just a little bit of composure. Uh, we, we hit the post as well, so uh, maybe that just that little bit of luck it, it just didn't go our way today. But um, yeah, happy with happy with the way they performed and the things they've taken on board. Alex Smith after that game at Ballymore. One more thing to mention, Teo, before we do, and I think injuries have ruled the roost today and, unfortunately, Chelsea Blissett, some knee-on-knee -knee contact today and she went down as well. Yeah, and she's been one of the leading lights this season. This is uh, a, a Victorian who's moved up to Queensland, has played in the NPL there for the last couple of years and then the Brisbane Raw, you know, snared her from Melbourne City, but clashing with Julia Sato yeah. there, T, yeah, immediately like, subbed off. Another hyper extension, like, it? looks it? like it? Yeah, so she which could, is similar could with be Wardlow out. as well. It's just knee on knee and then your knee hyper extends it's a, and it, it's a tricky one to... Yeah, it's painful. It's been a round of carnage, hasn't it, unfortunately? A round of carnage. And hopefully, um, you know, she pulls up OK and it's not too bad. But yeah. it did, didn't look good, that one. Scans galore on Monday morning, unfortunately. Let's go international now and find out what's been trending in the world of social media in women's football with Nalene Masto. Golden Girl revealed a new record set and a must-watch Aussie head-to-head -head battle. Here's what's trending in women's football. Real Madrid superstar Linda Casado was named the 2023 Golden Girl, an award that recognises the best players aged 21 years or younger. The 18-year-old Colombian has had a phenomenal rise, from overcoming ovarian cancer at 15 to playing at three Women's World Cups, all in the space of a year, at under-17s, under-20 and at senior level. And how can we forget that stunner she scored against Germany, that one goal of the tournament? Now over to England, where Chelsea midfielder Sophie Ingle played her 184th match, setting the all-time appearance record in the Women's Super League. And there's a mouth-watering Champions League group fixture you need to watch when Sam Kerr's Chelsea goes head-to-head -head with Sarah Hunter's Paris FC. Kerr has been in phenomenal form on the score sheet in their two-all draw against Real Madrid, and she's leading the assist tally in the WSL. As for Hunter, she'll be hoping to get more game minutes to help her side bounce back from their defeat against Hecken. Thanks so much, Nalene. Heaps of Aussies each involved in the group stage of the Champions League and I can't wait for that clash midweek. Sarah Hunter will be hoping for some serious game time up against Sam Kerr's Chelsea. Yeah, which will be... That's going to be a tough match because Chelsea against Real Madrid was an excellent game. Sam scored a goal, probably could have had a couple more. She had a couple of really good chances that she would have been disappointed to miss. But that Chelsea team is just stacked with talent, absolutely stacked with talent. Um, Emma Hayes in her final season with Chelsea before she goes to the US women's national team job. So um, that's a big task for Paris FC. But they did beat Arsenal to qualify through. So, you know, they've got some quality in that team too. And what an exciting prospect for Sarah Hunter herself as well. We'll be keeping a close eye on that. We'll bring you more on that on Dubzone next weekend. Let's get Teo's top tip for the round, which Teo's 
fast becoming an early season curse. Football fans are <laughs> thinking, please, don't mention my side, Teo. It's become the, the, <laughs> the weekly opening scene of a Final Destination movie, <laughs> Neve. Um, all right, here's my top tip for the week. There are three winless teams in the Liberty A-League right now. Western Sydney Wanderers, who play away to Western United, Adelaide, who play away to Brisbane, and also Canberra, who are hosting Newcastle. Prove me wrong, we will still have three winless teams this time next weekend. Uplifting, cool. Tao. <laughs> An uplifting way to end the show. We appreciate it. Prove me wrong. So much. Hopefully all those teams get in action anyway, just to begin things. That would be great. You've given them some motivation, too. I think, mm. Tao. Pin it to the notice board. <laughs> Tao Pelletzeri, thank you so much. Thank you, Neve. Teresa Polias, always a pleasure. Thank you, Neve. Ish Ferguson, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Neve. Thank you for joining us at home as well. It's been brilliant to have your company here on Dubzone tonight. Don't forget, if you miss us on a Sunday Arvo, you can catch Dubzone on the Keep Up Audio Network or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you again next Sunday night. Have a great week.